here we are. It's uh, October 26th, 1962, and, and the Russians are saying to Castro on the island, stay cool, stay collected, stay in your bunkers, order your people to just cool it. Nobody shoots, nobody does anything, because that's the order from Moscow. One of the most interesting questions uh, regarding the Cuban Missile Crisis has to do with Fidel Castro and whether, uh, to use a colloquial expression, he was crazy. Why is this an interesting question? Well, clearly, in the middle of the world's most dangerous nuclear crisis, to have one of the three leaders involved having, if it's true, if it were to be true, having lost his mind, uh, that is deeply disturbing. Americans were overflying the island dozens of times every day with supersonic aircraft that were taking pictures of the development of the missile sites and other related stuff. Now, they are asking their leader, their fearless leader Fidel Castro, shouldn't we be doing something? I mean, they're taking so many pictures, they're going to know exactly where all of us are. Fidel hears this, he feels it himself. And so contrary to his orders, he orders all the Cuban troops to open fire on anything within your range. Any plane that comes over, if you hear it, see it, turn that gun around and try to bring it down. This is a morale builder. It is also a message to the Soviets. We're here to fight this. We are not here to cave in, give in, relinquish our sovereignty. We're not gonna do it. We, the Cubans, are not gonna do it. Your problem, if you wanna do something different, but we're here to fight this thing to the conclusion. I didn't try to start a war. The war is already on. The war started the year before. 10 years before. The Americans have treated Cuba like dirt all this time, and finally, finally, we're standing up for ourselves. I mean, I think that would be the response. Is that crazy in this situation? Or should he, for example, have capitulated? The fact that he didn't, does that make him crazy? I, I think in order to reach that conclusion, he was crazy, he had kind of lost it. He couldn't handle the stress. He was irresponsible because he was in a nuclear situation that could have really blown up into a catastrophe, and here he was getting violent and aggressive all of a sudden. I mean, I, I understand the argument, but put yourself in his shoes. Put yourself on the island of Cuba. Your people are being set up, that's what it looks like from the island, your people are being set up for a massive hit. It'll have two parts. There'll be as we now know from American documents, 1,280 sorties, that is 1,280 flights to the island in the initial phase, all with bombs. That's a lot of bombs. Small island, a lot of bombs. That's the air attack and there's gonna be an invasion. They'll try to take over the island, kill the leadership, and do the usual kind of imperialist thing as the Cubans saw it. What can they do? I, I would uh, suggest that this situation is not all that different from the ending of a famous U.S. movie from the early 1970s called Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Butch Cassidy played by Paul Newman, the Sundance Kid played by Robert Redford, both young and extremely good looking. Are holed up in a hut in Bolivia with almost the entire Bolivian police force, army, all encircling them around the hills. They look at each other. End of movie, last scene, last 45 seconds. They look at each other. Here's the choice. To be shot to death, let them burn the hut, it's all over. Or, by God, could we take a few of these bastards with us? They're injured, they're bleeding, they grab their guns, they come ripping out of that hut, and the camera freezes on them as they come out, each of them smiling. End of movie. Gunshots go off for about 20 seconds while the credits start to roll. I ask you, does the director of that movie want you to think that these guys were crazy, had lost their minds, or are they heroes? Are they heroic? I think it's a no-brainer in that situation, however they got to that situation. After all, these guys are crooks. I mean, they don't really have any redeeming social value other than their pretty faces. They're crooks. But in that situation, they behaved heroically. I think that's what the message is. And I'd suggest to you that if you see differences between that and the ending or the near ending of the missile crisis, 
Well, good. I'd like you to send that in. I'd like to see it because I don't think Fidel Castro was crazy. I do think the situation, if you could think of it this way, the situation was crazy. The situation was perverse and the options were few. But I also think we don't ever want to create that situation again where a leader has only the option to take his country down for no reason or to take his country down along with some of those bastards in addition. We want to try to avoid that.